Welcome back to We're Not the Same. I'm Katie. This is my husband, Brian, and we are here to talk about all things health and wellness and conspiracy theories. That's right. <laughs> Waking up to this world. So today we are sharing our exact meals, what we eat in a day, and showing you everything that we eat. Laying it out on the table. So there's a surprise that we announce at the start of this episode too. So make sure you stick around and let's dive in. So a couple episodes back, we mentioned that we had a couple surprises for you guys and today we're excited to announce one of those things for you. And so that is a free ebook that we have put together all about our low tox slash animal based diet, sort of a food guide for you. So I think it's about 12 pages long, full of information about what we eat, different things we eat, different brands we like, different things we buy. Um, how to cook them, a couple recipes. So it's jam-packed, totally free to you guys. We will put a link in the description of this video and podcast for you so you can go check it out. And if you do download it, you might find out what the other surprise is. That's true. So yes. we'll, we'll share more on that next week, but you might as well just go download it and you'll find out what the other surprise is right away. So today's episode, we're going to kind of talk through some of the things that are in the guide and share with you what we specifically do. So kind of a day example, what we eat in a day, sort of an example so that you can just see. Um, we'll share what the girls eat too, if there's any differences so that if you have kids, which I know most of you do, you can have those examples because I feel like that's even more requested than what we eat is what do the kids eat. That's right. Um, so we'll get into all of that and, you know, just show you what we eat in a day. And I think you can go back and listen to our previous episode talking a little bit about health and nutrition. But just to lay the groundwork for those of you who haven't listened, we are, an uh, I would say, an animal-based diet. So not just carnivore, but animal-based, lots of fruit and meat. Um, and the focus of that is because it's a lot more bioavailable, the nutrients that you get from red meat and organs and things like that. Um, so that's why that's kind of our focus. And we've had a lot of success with, you know, we didn't intend to have weight loss as part of our success, but we both lost um, a good amount of weight when we started on this diet. But more importantly for me is I had a lot of gut issues um, for years and years and years and tried all sorts of different things, candida diets, the vegetables and kind of more vegan-ish style. But then once we got into this, I just, I felt a lot better. I'm not hundred percent but I would guarantee you I'm way better off than I was before. So there was a huge win and we've had friends of ours who have switched over and they feel so much better. Um, so that's why we're really excited and a little bit of groundwork of, of how we eat. So you'll kind of see that as we go through in our different meal periods and snacks. And if you listen to the last episode of Assumptions About Us, we do not eat perfectly like this every day, every meal. This isn't going to be a perfect example, but we do have cheat, cheat meals or just non, you know, ideal meals. So just putting that out there in case you didn't... That's right. You can go back to the previous episode and hear more about that. <laughs> okay. So let's start with breakfast. So that's kind of Brian's forte. So yeah. So I started uh, really focusing on cooking breakfast for the family during COVID when I was uh, able to work from home for all that time, which was awesome to be home with my girls. And I just really wanted to get in the habit of, you know, starting out the day right with a good breakfast. And thankfully, I've been able to continue that. It just kind of works out when the girls get up that I'm still able to cook breakfast now, even though I'm back to work four out of five days a week. <laughs> um, but it's a really important meal of your day, what they always say. So our meal starts with breakfast. Uh, it always consists of eggs. And these are pasture-raised organic egg most of the time. Um, if you can't do pasture organic raised, we typically go to just pasture-raised if you can't get pasture-raised, then we'll go just on the organic side. So it, it's a lot of like what your stores offer. Um, but we always have eggs. We usually scramble them um, for the most part. And I always cook in tallow or I've been cooking in tallow most recently. So if you don't know, tallow is basically beef fat. Um, so I have our, our, our stainless steel pan, get it really hot, throw some tallow in there, and then scrambled eggs. And that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Nice fluffy eggs. And then with that, we always have fruit, some sort of fruit. It's usually strawberries and blueberries that are cut up, or we might have some watermelon or cantaloupe or pineapple, kind of whatever's in season at the time. We try to have fresh fruit. Yep. 
Uh, after that, we always have, or I would say most of the time, we have avocado toast. Mm -hmm. So I do gluten-free toast. Um, and I, the key is when you're looking for gluten-free toast, try to find ones without... I haven't found the perfect one, but when you look in the ingredients, try to avoid the seed oils. So I found one that uses olive oil versus the canola oils. Mine does have some added sugar. It's not a lot, but it's trying like to get one gram per. Yeah, trying to get no added sugar and no seed oils and gluten free bread. We haven't found that yet. So we chose the no seed oils over the added sugar. Exactly. <laughs> I'm going to look into a good recipe for like a sandwich bread. So like a homemade sandwich bread. So if anybody has one of those, let me know. But I want to try to make our own so that we can have the perfect. Yes, that'd be awesome. You know, bread. And then the girls and I eat the Ezekiel bread. So so that's, I would say, our fundamental breakfast every morning. It, there's yep. some variants that go on. Like some we, recently we've been having coconut yogurt. So coconut yogurt with fresh fruit and a yeah, little honey. Little yogurt parfaits. And so in the ebook, you'll see... Uh, like a sample meal, which for breakfast, that just that's like our only meal. We don't really <laughs> deviate. But then I also included other alternative things to either add or swap. So you can see all the different variety of foods that, you know, would fit into the diet that we follow. Yep. And then sometimes we also, for additional protein, we'll do bacon, which is awesome. Some really good bacon um, or some sausage, chicken, chicken sausage, sausage from Costco that's organic. So those are kind of variants. But it's a good hearty breakfast every morning. I don't know. I feel kind of proud as a dad to be providing my family with a good <laughs> breakfast every morning. Well, we certainly appreciate it. I will say I don't always wake up like ready to eat such a big meal, but I try to force myself to at least eat all the eggs and avocado and all that because it's good to start your day off strong. Otherwise, you're hungry by 10 a.m. like the kids. <laughs> Very true. So even though they eat such a breakfast, I don't know, their metabolism is just so fast that they're hungry, usually right around 10 in the morning. So I guess I will merge into snacks, which is a section of the ebook because that's such a highly requested yeah. thing. So for the girls, typically like their favorite snack, I would say, is a Lara bar or a Scout Organic bar, which I also included my coupon code in the ebook for that. Um or like if we have the granola bars, I have more rare on the granola bars just because there isn't like a really perfectly clean granola bar. Um, but those are like their favorite snack food, I feel like. So that is usually the 10 a.m. snack. And <laughs> sometimes if they haven't finished their breakfast, I make them like take a few more bites of anything left over from breakfast, which usually that just only applies to Georgia. I was going to say, Avery. calling you out, Georgia. <laughs> Avery's been doing <laughs> Avery awesome eats all her food um, usually at every meal. Yes. But Georgia. Which was a struggle. I mean, Avery used when to When Avery not was be like three, that. she didn't, yeah, she didn't want to eat. She had to be, you know, fed each bite. And so we're just in that phase with Georgia. So she'll get there, but it's, Agony uh, <laughs> in mealtime. Georgia eat, Georgia eat, Georgia eat. Take yeah. another bite, Georgia. She's Dang very it. distracted. <laughs> so then lunch. This is where we differ uh -huh. because we're apart. So for lunch with the girls, one thing that I recently added in, which sounds bad, but is hot dogs. So I actually get, they actually have a brand. It's called Applegate. They have organic pasture-raised all-beef hot dogs. So yes, it's still highly processed meat, but it's one of the better lunch alternatives because some of the other things they eat for lunch is a peanut butter and jelly or chicken nuggets, you know, of course the best that you can buy of all of those things. But I like that they get some better protein at lunch with the hot dog and it's very easy to make. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do buns on any of our hot dogs or burgers or anything. So it's just eating the hot dog. Then for sides, they usually have, well, they always have fruit, um, sometimes some carrots. Sometimes they will have like corn or baked beans because they just like those things. Um, or edamame. They love edamame. <laughs> <laughs> and then I usually pretty much always just have whatever they're having. <laughs> my lunch is not like my best, but occasionally I will like make myself a burger or um, sometimes we have like other lunch meat or things like that. For yep. lunch. So I would say lunch is probably my least favorite meal of the day. <laughs> just, it's the hardest. Just always like, comes around, you know. It's yeah. Just like, sometimes I'll do kind of more like a snacky lunch, like a couple carrots, a couple 
um, pieces of fruit, like some ham, like deli meat ham. Kind of like charcuterie? Yeah, like some bites of cheese, a couple crackers. Yeah, like little snacky. And when we talk about the best of those things that you mentioned. Right? Yeah, so of like course, it's all going to be organic. It's all going to be the fewest ingredients possible, the cleanest ingredients possible. Like nothing, when I buy the deli ham, I find the one that's just ham and salt or whatever, yep. like as few ingredients as possible. So for my lunch, uh, I will usually do leftovers from the dinner before. So we'll get to dinners. Um, I would say my ideal lunch that I really enjoy, sometimes I'll be proactive about like if I grill earlier in the week, like burgers or steak, I'll try to grill a little bit extra. So I'll have that for lunch. I've really enjoyed for a while was doing a burger patty. So, you know, hundred percent grass fed and grass finished beef um, with a half auto of half of an avocado and then a like a scrambled egg or a fried egg on top and then some honey over that. It's just a really good insult, a really good meal that fills me up. And it's also that's if you're sweet. working from home, right? That's if I'm working from home. <laughs> if I'm not working from home, I'll still try to do that just without the egg. Like I can do the avocado and the honey yeah. and the burger. But and then I usually have a side 100 percent of fruit. Um, my snacks for me are like the the little fruit bar fruit sticks. This they're like um, it's just fruit. It's like smashed up fruit in a stick. Um, the ultimate fruit roll up <laughs> that has an nothing actual, out in it except fruit. <laughs> <laughs> an actual fruit roll up, not some plasticky flavor fruit flavored. A high thing. fructose corn I, syrup. I ate so many of those, the blue ones that had like the puzzle pieces. Oh yeah. Those are the bomb. Yeah. Our kids will never know that happened. They will not know that <laughs> in the plastic like peeled off from yeah. it in the roll. Oh, fruit man. by the foot where it was like yes. that big roll, roll like and just, red oh man whatever 90s kids. that is yeah we survived good somehow. times not not well but not here well. we are <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah those are my main things I, I don't think there's other snacks i'll do the that's it bars which are other fruit bars for for snacks at work chomps, chomps yep yep which are uh like beef jerky sticks that are pretty good and then i always make sure that i have uh, and we can talk a little bit more about this too, but like at work, I actually have a um, thing of my organs. So we do desiccated liver and I have a desiccated. <laughs> just on his desk, just like a I thing totally of organs. Do. No, uh, like the way you said you didn't specify like your organ pills or your beef <laughs> organs, just my organs. Like what? <laughs> just his thyroid is there in the jar. <laughs> yeah, I get a lot of work, a lot of looks at work. Uh, yes, I have my my bottle of desiccated liver pills, um, as well as the I think it's the mix of organs, so like kidney, liver, mm. whatever. And which is funny because no one's ever said anything, but a few people will like share my office. Like my boss will sit in my office sometimes, and um, and others, and it's like it's very clear. It's like right there at my organ pills, and nobody's asking hey, about it. You but... should make a little plaque of educating them on. I should. I'm curious what these are. Scan this QR code. Download our free guide. Totally. Totally. <laughs> and also, I mentioned this in a previous podcast, but like during that 2 a, you know, 2 p.m., you know, slump that we all get, I definitely still drink coffee. But at work, when I don't have my clean organic coffee, I, if you use these liver pills, I swear it's like 30 minutes and it's like, boom, I have a ton of energy. It's because they're packed with B12 and all the other B vitamins. So it's not shocking. But it really does work. Yeah. So give that a try if you if you need some energy. And the other thing I was going to say, kind of going back to snacks, because after lunch, of course, there's more snacks before dinner, is that for me, obviously not for the kids, but for us, when we're really doing well, following our diet, eating our, you know, great satiating meals, the snacking is just minimal to none. I mean, there are times where I don't really have any snacks, like, a lot of days I feel like I don't really snack because I don't know it's just that you're eating real food for your meals that actually fills you up and stays with you throughout the day so you don't have that need of like constant snacking like I remember before we ever started any of these diets or knowing anything I used to just like every time I would make Avery a snack I would make myself a snack you know like she was having goldfish I would have goldfish she was having pretzels I would have pretzels like all the different snacks throughout the day and now I just I don't know I don't really eat that many snacks anymore that's crazy so, it used to be a huge part of I think that's like a yeah. huge you know testament to and I'll notice this too the times where we do get fast food or something like I'm hungry like an hour later I'll yeah. eat I'll eat probably more than what I eat at home but I'm hungry an hour later you're just 
I mean, it's it's, not it's truly it's like hell on earth. Like it's like in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie. Like yes. I eat, but I'm never full. I drink, but I always thirst. Like that is so true when you're just eating garbage all the time. So true. So then the last meal of the day is obviously dinner, which is definitely my arena. And That's right. I typically try to make like a nice meal. You do. It's so like amazing when I come in the house. Like I'll get home and it's just like so quintessential house, which is so yeah. awesome. Like I'll And open I wear like heels. I put on a <laughs> yeah. nice dress. I have my pearls. Like I I do my makeup, guys. No, that's all a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually in my I'm in my linen pants. That's what I'm talking about. No bra, like hair and makeup is just not happening. (laughs) That's what he likes. I know. Yeah, getting me going over here. I know. (laughs) (laughs) I know what he likes, people. (laughs) Uh, But it is so quintessential. I mean, walk in the door and like the house smells great with dinner you're cooking, and the girls come up and give me big hugs. It's like, oh, this is so nice. This is where I want to be. Aw. Well, we're always very happy when you arrive home. Trust me on that. (laughs) <laughs> so for dinner, I mean, I feel like we have two main dinners. So one of our favorite dinners that we have at least once a week is steak. Some sort of a steak from we use butcher box for all of our steaks, um, which is grass fed and grass finished beef. Um, and so usually on steak nights, you I, I grill. You grill as soon as you get home. Yep. And then for sides, we always have fruit. <laughs> always have fruit. Um, one of our other favorite sides is raw carrots. So just not baby carrots, but just buy like the full size carrots and you know, what what's it called? Peeling. Peel the carrots. And then sometimes I cut them up, but the girls actually like when I don't cut it up. So they just have like a giant carrot stick. So we're just like Bugs Bunny over here with our giant carrot sticks. But raw carrots actually help your body to get rid of excess estrogen, which excess estrogen is one of like the biggest problems in America right now because everything is highly estrogenic. So that's obviously not good, especially for men to have all this excess estrogen. It's not good for women either. But um, that's why raw carrot is actually good what and obviously you, good in vitamin A and all these things. So. And what were you saying the other day with estrogen and like hair growth or something? Yeah. Uh, if you have excess estrogen, it causes number one is like belly fat. So everybody, when you see somebody like with a beer belly, that's excess estrogen. Ah. It causes... It throws off all your hormones if you have too much estrogen. So, yeah, you can have like weird hair growth, you know, like for females, you might have more like male looking, you know, facial hair growth. Yeah. We were just talking about the other night how like we don't need to like pluck our eyebrows anymore. Like not that you were ever like a big eyebrow plucker, but occasionally I had to get in there, you know. Um, But for me too, like I don't have like weird random hairs that I have to pluck anymore. So that's just kind of a weird side effect Yay that I attribute to, yeah, having balanced hormones. Yeah. But the raw carrots are also really sweet. Like, yeah, they're delicious. They're so good. I feel like that's another thing we've mentioned in the past too. Like as you start eating better and less sugars, things, you start to actually taste the food. Oh, yeah. You know, like carrots become super sweet. It's hard sweet to imagine that we used to not really like eating fruit or like yeah. eating carrots and stuff like that like it just tasted so bland and you can now like clearly taste all the different types of fruit and like the different types the different cuts even throughout of the meat. year like the carrots you can tell like oh these were from yes. when it was in season <laughs> totally so next step is going to be growing our own carrots yes whenever it gets to the season for that um but the other probably biggest side dish that we have is roasted potatoes so always get organic potatoes. Um, sweet potatoes are actually okay if they're not organic. Um, but if you can find organic and it's not like crazy more expensive, go ahead and get that. But for potatoes, I usually just chop them up, you know, into cubes and do olive oil and salt and put it in the oven. So good. 425 for a long time, like until they look roasted. I like them really soft, so... Well, that's the heck out of them that we haven't done in a while, but that we enjoyed is squash and zucchini are actually classified. They're they're more like fruit than they are Mm -hmm. vegetables. So we'll do those as well. And if you chop those up and put them in a pan with olive oil and salt, and let them like 
I don't say cook burn, the but you got to cook the heck out of them. And they're really, again, they're super sweet because the longer you cook them, I think the, the, it like the crystallizes sugars. or whatever, yeah. but it's so, so good. And you can do that with carrots too. You just don't get the like benefits yes. of the helping with the estrogen. But, you know, sometimes we do cook the carrots yeah. just to, to change it up a little bit. <laughs> So when we do chicken, I always order our chicken from Cook's Venture and they have pasture-raised heirloom chicken. It's the most delicious chicken that you've ever had. We ate out at a fast food restaurant and every time we eat there, there's only like one thing on the menu that he can get that's, you know, gluten-free, dairy-free, which is like their grilled chicken. Chicken tenders. And like every them. time he's like, they just overcooked this chicken. Like it's not good. Da da da. I'm like, there's no way they're overcooking it every time. It's just that it's not Cook's Venture chicken. <laughs> It's That's so good. why. Like, it's just your average chicken that, you know, we don't have that at home. So when we go out, it's like, what is this? Chicken is just not good. <laughs> and we are not affiliated with them. So that is an honest review of their chicken. Yes, their chicken is so good. Um, we also, so basically what I do with chicken usually is just like salt and just pan fry the chicken, not fry, even just cook it. Yeah. Um, or sometimes I'll use Primal Kitchen makes like a teriyaki marinade that i'll use that um but yeah oh. i keep it really really simple guys we also really really enjoy um they have ground chicken and we'll do like uh, tacos mm -hmm. and you'll make uh your own taco seasoning with your few spices that you have but then katie makes this amazing gluten-free tortillas oh my gosh they're so good it's uh, like a newfound thing and like i've already made it like three or four times oh, because amazing they're so good. Yeah. And so we do the, like the homemade tortilla with the ground chicken and the uh, avocado, like avocado spread. Cheese. That's pretty much it for me. But then you yeah, have the cheese and uh, it's just, it's really good. So and cheese. Hats it, off to you. I feel oh, like you've come you. so far in your cooking. Well, I got to do the gluten-free bread too. Yes. That's the next thing. But yeah, the tortillas, we used to do the siete tortillas, which are very clean and gluten-free, mm -hmm. dairy-free, all those things. Um, but I mean. They're expensive. But they're just really not good compared in comparison well, to these yeah, homemade compared to tortillas. Home ones. Oh like, my gosh, they're also like super thin and they break and stuff. Yeah, like, they're still good. I mean, they taste good, but they're they not. Taste that right, they're but, not as good as yours. Yeah, when you were on the candida diet, which was like the oh. total opposite of what we're on now, it was all vegetables and no sugars, no fruit, no sweeteners of any kind, like no honey, no maple syrup, no nothing. I I was following all these recipes and like that took so much time and planning and effort and like they were good a lot of the things that i was able to make but it took so much to pre like with those restrictions to prepare something good now it's like steak carrot potatoes fruit like it's not hard i don't even meal plan anymore because it's just every day it's like all right burger steak or chicken which one <laughs> take your pick take it out of the freezer in the morning and you know cook it there's not really i'm i'm kind of going back i guess to going more into trying different recipes yeah. but obviously still follow our rules but just to switch it up because you know this guy over here will never get bored like he'll eat the same thing every day for the rest of his life but yeah i need variety i need the spice of life because I, I get bored <laughs> i do appreciate the changes but yeah i yeah I'm, i can be pretty consistent in whatever we eat you, but you do you you do you start to like appreciate just like everything like you start appreciating the different types of chicken the chicken you know the the ground chicken versus yeah. the chicken tenders versus the chicken breast and just like all the cuts of meat like I can totally tell. And actually, the whole family can tell, and yeah. including our three and five year old, the difference between a ribeye, a sirloin, and a filet mignon, with filet being their favorite, of course. Well, I mean, yeah. Who's what kind of heathens not are we? Loving filet, <laughs> filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I think it's really simple. I think uh, people, you know, when you first start having more restrictions, quote unquote, the main restriction is just not having a bunch of processed crap. Um, but that is hard at first if you're coming from, you know, we obviously went through that phase where it felt so hard and, oh my gosh, what do we eat? And like, you just figure it out over time and you figure out what works for your family, what your family likes, what your family doesn't like. Um, I also included in the ebook a section on drinks, beverages, because we, oh my I feel like we just 
are the beverage, are the beverage family. family. Yeah, <laughs> so many beverages. Um, again, the spice of life, you know? I can't just drink water all day, every day. And honestly, it's not good for you to just chug plain water all day, every day. That depletes you of minerals. If you're going pee 87 times a day and you have clear pee, that's not good, guys. Like, that's not good. Um, so you got to stay hydrated, but you got to, you know, have some have some minerals, have some good things coming in for you. So that's, you know, included in the ebook if you want to go download that. So, but again, it's not as hard as it seems. And honestly, once you get in the groove, it's easier because there's less things. There's less, and it tastes so good. Like that's the thing with like this quote unquote diet. We get to eat meat and fruit and like, all the delicious stuff, but you know, but I don't do dairy right now, but like the butters and cheeses and all of that, as long as they're good and they're the grass fed, they're the organic, it's not this like highly processed food. So like you always hear like, ah, oh, don't eat red meat, don't eat all these bad things. It's like, well, yeah, if you're getting it from horrible sources or if you're getting, you know, like mm -hmm. all these highly processed foods, like, yeah, it's going to wreak havoc on you. But if you get the stuff as it was intended to eat, it's actually very nutritious for you. And so. just to go, you know, have to touch on just a little bit of conspiracy theory in every episode. That's right. Added in here. It's not a conspiracy at all. But obviously there's, you know, the big push of the climate agenda going on and villainizing of red meat and wanting us to eat bugs. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, you know. She called it early. I called it early. I was letting you guys know. And now you guys all, when you see stuff about bugs, you send it to me. <laughs> and I love that. That's amazing. Um, so we can just keep spreading the word. But if you're eating meat, now granted, somebody's going to say, yeah, but you get your meat from Australia. It has to fly across the ocean. Okay, that's true. We could buy from a local farmer, but they're always out. They're always out. They never have what we want. Um, but anyways, the point is these are cows that are grazing regenerative farming. They're, they're helping the land. They're not harming it. I agree. Like conventional meat, factory farmed animals that are just, you know, being churned through the machine. <laughs> like a bad uh, terminology to use, bad imagery, but that that is harmful to the people, the planet, and the animals. And that, I don't like that. But animals that are in part of God's design of everything, the circle of life, you know, we're in a Lion King phase right. over here. <laughs> the circle of life. I mean, that song honestly makes me tear up. <laughs> here we go it's so beautiful it's so true and we should get back to that back to the days of when disney you know was just a good wholesome and they were making original really wholesome yeah movies. no they just remake the, the same thing every five years yeah. <laughs> but i don't know where i was going with that the point is it's what a, what does the carnivore guy call it it's like a return to tradition like primitive eating or ancestral. ancestral an ancestral diet this is how humans ate obviously a little tweaked okay we're not out eating raw heart in the jungle like some of these people but yeah <laughs> to the best of our modern day abilities trying to eat in a way that humans were eating for thousands of years the standard american diet is the experiment this is not an experiment exactly there's just so many lies out there. The other thing I wanted to add is, so just because Brian and Georgia are dairy-free, the whole family kind of just is dairy-free for the most part. Avery drinks cow's milk. I just don't really love milk, so I don't really drink milk. But I started adding cheese back into my diet, like organic, whole whatever. Grass -fed. Yeah, organic, grass-fed cheese. And that was like such a game changer for me. Raw cheese too, right? You can get. Yeah. Are you doing raw I cheese? don't know like what the exact Florida laws are. You can have raw milk and raw dairy products for pet consumption legally, um, but they're not sold in stores or anything. You can get it like direct from farmers. But for some reason, you can get raw cheese in the store. So Sprouts is where I have found raw cheese. I haven't actually opened that one yet. So be. But I have had I've had it in the past, I guess. Well, and I think the important thing too is well, one cheese is delicious, so it's good from a. It's from, delicious, but the the fat from it. Exactly, is, that's where I was going. Yeah, it's so important to get fat in your diet, which is like so counter what we've all been told. Yeah, which is we exactly were raised, we're true. the low fat 
air quotes, low fat generation, like everything. Full of heart disease and heart attacks is the number one thing. So yeah. that's working out well for you, huh? Um, but anyway, so the importance of fat in your diet is, is critical. So like your cheeses, your butters, your meat, um, fat. So like your tallows, your geese, um, I also, because Avocado, I coconut oils, exactly. That was what I was going to say. It's like, I do like coconut oil is really good for you. Um, so we not only just cooking with it, I mean, Katie doesn't do this, but I do like straight coconut oil. So I'll have like coconut water and like, I don't know, teaspoon or tablespoon or two of coconut oil. Um, and I'll just kind of alternate a little bit of that and, and it's like goes down pretty easily. Uh, it tastes great because it's coconut. It just tastes weird to swallow oil by itself without like something else. So yeah. anywho, but it adds a lot of great fat. You feel so much better. It like, like really energy. hydrates you. It's energy. There's so many, look up coconut oil. There's so many benefits to it. Um, funny enough, that's what they used to cook popcorn in so like movie pop they might still do it it's probably refined coconut oil well at disney like, they do we looked oh, it they up still do the coconut yeah. oil so it's hilarious that they that's what popcorn is cooked in again it's probably not and that's why it tastes coconut. so good right yeah. like it tastes good because and it's bad for you air quotes again bad for you of saturated fat and all this but like consider the source yes and exactly. you will see that it's okay. But yeah, so it's so funny because I used to always say cheese is the glue that holds my life together. And then I kind of got away from eating so much cheese and the type of cheese I was eating, I should get away from. Yes. But now being cheese. able to like, <laughs> don't like out me like that. <laughs> so rude. You used to be. I was bad me. too. <laughs> the nacho fries with the cheese dip. Those are good. What? Surprise. Crunch I'm alive. Rock. I know. <laughs> But now the right type of cheese is obviously so good. It makes me so happy that I have that back in my life. Good. Yeah. Glad your life is fulfilled again. Yes. Jesus and cheese. Love the cheese. <laughs> that pretty much wraps it up. Again, it's simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. I show my meals on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram pretty often, I will show like, hey, this is what we're having for dinner. This is what we had for lunch. Showed breakfast the other day. Just whenever I feel like it or whenever it's like worthy of showing i guess whenever i take time to plate my breakfast no i just throwing it on <laughs> well the breakfast is honestly the most impressive you know meal look wise our dinner well, like is usually like and stuff. some meat some carrots and some fruit like it's not the prettiest but the, that's okay like and for all meals the kids eat what we eat there is no oh, yeah. like making other things. Yeah. And there's more details and it's all written out for you, all tactically like laid out all the different plans. Again, it's like meal prep, recipes, beverages, brands, some brand stuff in there. So um, yeah, go check it out. Go click on the link. And um, again, you might see our next announcement in there too, if you, if you look closely. Yes. <laughs> so thanks for watching and thanks for downloading the ebook and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.